Well, I've gone over this before, but I grow weary and tired <coughs> of people not having any ability to answer my question. Now, a lot of these people allege themselves to be atheist, believing in, believing in evolution and the Big Bang and gravity. And I'm here to ask anyone out there a specific question, followed by empirical fact. My question is as follows. When you Google, what don't we know about gravity? Why does science, who acknowledges Kevin Dash and gravimeters, admit, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way? How is that possible that such an answer can be revealed? I want to know why or how they can say this if gravity itself is pulling, holding, or curving over one quintillion gallons of water to the outside surface of a giant spinning spherical water world space ball. My second or third question is, is gravity some sort of God? Was Newton some sort of prophet? Is NASA now at present the disciples of Newton who served the god of gravity? Why can't one iota smithereen or scintilla of any signature of any energy of gravity itself nor one grain of dirt worth of presence or substance of current field, wave, beam, ray, or particle of gravity itself be directly detected anywhere on the earth. Now you might ask, why am I calling gravity some sort of God that you people believe in? Believe in? Because maybe you didn't know or forgot, but they teach that gravity itself, after the Big Bang, assembled everything you look up at, at night, during the day, in the very ground that you stand on. That gravity itself assembled the earth, the sun, the moon, every one of your planets, every one of your stars, every asteroid, every meteorite. And everything else you believe in when you see countless artist renderings, conceptions, impressions, composites, and animations, and all the other lovely things you love to believe in based on endless theory. I continually, in a brave manner, seek out an answer of how can gravity itself be doing everything they say it's doing but fit the absolute definition of non-existent, intangible, missing in action? How is that possible that in today's technology, 500 plus years after Newton put forth the theory of gravity, why can't any device, instrument, or man directly detect gravity itself? Which renders the answer, however, if we are to be honest, and that is very peculiar to say, however, if we are to be honest, we do not know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way, the number one answer out of almost 3 million or 300 million, I forget. It is easy to forget such nonsense. That the answer is again and again, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. Must you review what fundamental means? I get no answer. The only answers I get are what people fervently believe gravity is doing, what it did or will do. The sound of crickets when it 
concerns any answer pertaining to gravity itself is all I get. Now, if you are an atheist, I'm here to tell you, you are not. You are not an atheist because you believe in the God of gravity. It must be some sort of God to do all these things, to have having assembled every planet, star, moon, sun, the earth, after the Big Bang, and to be holding over a quintillion gallons of water in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, every person, place, and thing, and have no presence or substance of itself whatsoever. No current, no field, no wave, no beam, ray, or particle. I mean, I could entertain if someone said, well, gravity exists in the fourth or the fifth or the ninth or the fifteenth dimension. And this fifteenth or ninth or eighth or whatever dimension it exists in, that dimension is parallel to the Earth's three dimensions. And the effects of gravity are a byproduct of some sort. Is that what I have to do? Do I have to feed you an answer? Are you going to just say, why do things fall down? That's a valid question. But to then go on and say that it's some force or occurrence that has no presence in substance whatsoever that has never been directly detected acting on anything fallen is illogical. When there is a much simpler answer readily available to anyone with an IQ over 99. That a microphone fallen is doing so because it has more density than its surrounding air. So it will fall through it until it reaches something that can support it. The ground or someone sticking out their hand to catch it. Someone recently asked me, well, well, if water and mass or large bodies of water always seek and maintain their level, I had to tell this guy, we use water to demonstrate level in an instrument called a level. We use water to do so. He tried to say, well, what are tides? And I had to explain to him that water and mass, i.e. large bodies of water, always seek and maintain their level. And such and said level is never perpendicular to anything that's not there, that can only exist in the realm of theory, which that is what gravity is. So I had to explain to him that fresh water in lakes never exhibit the phenomenon known as tides. It's only in salt water. Okay, and it is apparent, it can be demonstrated, that if you turn on a faucet with a little slight stream of water, coming out and you rub an inflated balloon against your chest you create a static charge and if you hold that balloon next to the water it will attract the water it is an electrical static charge you create now if you add a lot of salt to the water which is what the Atlantic and Pacific oceans are we know salt is a high conductor of electricity so it is therefore highly probable that tides are the result of an electromagnetic influence. Now, am I going to stand here and say that that is the absolute uh, definition of a tide? No, I have not demonstrated that in mass with large bodies of water, but I can say it's highly probable. It has more weight and substance than something that has no presence and substance, which gravity itself has none. So if you just want to bypass everything I just said and just answer one question I will repeat myself science readily acknowledges Cavendish and gravimeters which only demonstrate the alleged effects or results of gravity they do not directly detect gravity itself okay two balls supposedly and allegedly moving closer is a demonstration of an effect or result. It is not gravity itself. Again, science readily acknowledges Cavendish and gravimeters. But when you ask, what don't we know about gravity, on your search engine called Google, out of 300 million results, the number one answer 
is, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. So to continue to believe in it makes you a disciple of Newton, who is a disciple of gravity, which he worshipped as a god, and is what you are doing right now. And again and again, I can say that my belief in the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob Israel, the Father of Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Hamashiach, is entirely based on faith. I have no problem admitting that. Do you? Do you realize you are worshiping a God called gravity? that has no presence and substance of itself whatsoever, it leaves or exhibits no signature of energy itself, holding, pulling, or cur curving over a quintillion gallons of water to the outside surface of a giant spinning spherical water world space ball, whizzing, darting, hurtling, wobbling through an infinite vacuum universe, billions of light years across? I mean, how dumb can you be? A few nights ago, I made a video of this bush blowing left, right, up, down, and diagonally by wind, gas, and oxygen. And this is occurring at sea level, where they say gravity has the most influence. And it, gas and oxygen do whatever they want in the area where they say gravity has the most influence. They even say if you climb a mountain, you weigh less because gravity weakens with altitude the higher you go. So if gas and oxygen go in every direction where they say this force or occurrence of gravity is stronger, then what would gas and oxygen be doing way up at the Kármán line, directly next to and surrounded by an infinite vacuum universe? I'll tell you, based on empirical fact, that Gas and oxygen always fill the available volume of a puny vacuum chamber we make on Earth. So it would do the same thing way up there. All the gas and oxygen would immediately and instantaneously fill the alleged volume of an area billions of light years wide. And there'd be no gas and oxygen on the Earth. And so... And because that there is gas and oxygen on the earth, I know for a fact and surety that there is no infinite vacuum universe billions of light years across beyond our sky. Because empir empirical fact is against it. Gas and oxygen will always fill the available volume of the puny vacuum chambers we make. And this occurs at sea level. And gas and oxygen blow in all directions, up, down, left, right, and diagonally on the ground where they say gravity has more influence. So what is it going to do where gravity has less influence, 250 miles high, and directly next to an infinite vacuum universe? It will instantaneously fill the vacuum universe and I wouldn't be standing here, nor would you or anyone else. And because we are standing here, we know anyone with an IQ over 99 can realize that whatever is beyond our sky is not an infinite vacuum universe. Gravity is fake. If you continue to believe in it, you must have faith. There is no empirical evidence of gravity itself. They admit it. And gravity is your God. Make a little figurine of it and start praying to it and see how that works out for you.